Hey, everyone. We are here with James and Nathan from Hell is for Other People. If you don't know them, you're fucking missing out. Um, dudes, thank you very much for joining me tonight. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Happy to oh, be here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. I like that. Hell yeah. Um, so the band is super new to me, but like I listen, I really dig the sound. I was just jamming out to fates when James logged in. Like, yeah. all right, this is a fucking good jam. Um, Thanks, man. So how long has the band been together? Um, uh, you, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you're in, this, James is the more longstanding this, member, yeah. so I'll let him I, front the from beginning there. Sort of this edition, we've been uh, like the four of us together now for a little while. It's been like myself and like Nathan and other Nathan for what, five or six, seven years maybe at this point. Like, yeah, it's been a yeah. long time pre COVID at least, right? Yeah, something like I think it was 2019 that I kind of got on board. Oh, so, okay. me and the other Nathan, um, who's the guitarist, um, him and uh, Diddy have been. Yeah, we, he for, and I have been, they, they're like, like the core. They've been here since the pretty much the beginning. Yeah, I've been I've been getting like my Facebook messages memories from like 10 years ago. And we're like the first time behind the computer. And it's like, holy fuck, it's been this long. Like, so, yeah, 11, 12 years of like myself and Nathan jamming together. OK. Um, in like a, a little bit of a different sort of, um, I guess, more of like a Alexis on fire kind of angled, like post hardcore uh, set. And that's where we're like, that's where we got the orid. That's where we got the name from. Uh, we were doing a, a different vocalist had like, he was, I don't know, reading a bunch of Sartre at the time. So he had the idea of it and we were like, hell yeah, like it's cool. The name, the name sticks, whether or not I've been reading it or not is right. another matter, but it's, is good. Um, but yeah, we'd gone through just like member changes and then like style changes as we sort of geared more into like, doing the more blackened and like adding the more like heavy tremolo like long drone sections um sort of the long form writing style i guess yeah but yeah, yeah we've been we've been yeah i guess like for what we've been putting out um yeah we, we've got some eps that you can find on our band camp that are from <laughs> Cat cat appearance. Cat uh, appearance. we've got band, yeah, we've got band camp stuff from like a long time ago that shows some of the older uh older angle, I guess. Okay. Yeah, for, since uh we had a, a big sort of member shift where basically everyone left the band except for myself and uh, other Nathan. And uh we were like, Okay, now's our chance. Like let's like let's just refocus, let's do like what you and I want to do, let's do this. And then we kind of did that. We started playing a string of shows. And, uh, I mean, we got approached by, uh, Nathan, our current vocalist being like, Hey, like you guys are looking for a bass player. Like you guys are like, I like what you're doing. Be cool to join up. And then, I mean, he, uh, Nathan plays in a band called sentiment dissolve. Um, they're like a tech death band. Um, and his guitar player, Nick is like the two of them are like bros. So it's just like, Hey, like, does Nick want to do this? It'd be cool. I know he'd be able to do it. So Nick's been playing with us for about a year, year and a half, okay. maybe two years as like basically full time. He was a hired gun, but we were like, what the hell? Like, we might as well have you full time. Like, it just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So si since you like shifted into the, like the, the more blackened, you know, like area, uh, how do you feel about the direction of the band and how everything's kind of coming together? I, I mean, I can personally say. Yeah, you, you yell. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. I, I really like like just the direction that it's going. So I'm kind of coming to um the music from a bit more of like a black metal atmo black kind of perspective, like that, like Agaloc, Alcest, like Altar of Plagues, maybe like Harakiri for the Sky, like that kind of stuff. Is my... A bands only. A yeah, bands only. yeah, yeah. I should have stuck with A bands there. Yeah, yeah. Amon Ra. There we go. There's another there one. Um, yeah, but so when um, when the band was kind of moving into a more like, yeah, Deaf Heaven post black inspired direction, that's kind of when I got wind of them playing. Uh, so me and my buddy Nick were from London and then the other hell guys are from based out of Windsor. 
Um, so we didn't really link up until later until we actually played uh, like a show together with one of our other bands. And then I think that's where we kind of became aware of each other's existence. And then, yeah, I was just really kind of vibing with that more Atmo Black direction. And the new album that's coming out is the first time I've had any sort of input into kind of the writing process at all. Like it's the first album I've performed anything on with the band. So the split that they did with My Lonely Sea, uh, that was already done when I had come in. I had sort of come in to fill the role of the bass player who had left just right before they were about to do a little string of shows with uh with our our buddies in trench lung we had that up so i joined up and yeah. played those first few shows i was originally just the bass player we had another vocalist and then that vocalist left and then they were like hey i know you uh do vocals in your other band there maybe we can yeah, uh, we were, sw we swing some of that in here of, too yeah we sort of reached the point of being like we'll see how this goes we'll do one show if it goes really really poorly then we'll never speak of this again <laughs> uh but like <laughs> if it goes great then hell yeah like hell yeah yeah like one fewer member like one fewer mouth to feed one fewer ass in the van like let's go <laughs> yeah okay yeah. yeah so so fortunately I, I think i did okay i've still been doing it up until this point i grinded doing the doing the double mm -hmm. i definitely consider myself more of a vocalist than a bass player though like like i can i can do what i gotta do for this band but i'm, I'm definitely not doing any crazy sweeps or anything like that it's Whoa. all holding down the root baby yeah yeah a little bit of that but i think that you know for the style that we're going for i feel really like like I'm I'm really proud of the album and I'm really proud of the material. Mm -hmm. This is the music that like I, I would say Agalock is probably my favorite band of all time. So to be in a band that's like gets me to sort of actualize that kind of material for myself is something that like is really exciting. And it's just cool seeing the reactions to people that are hearing it, like whether we're playing shows and they're like, yo, man, that that hit me in a place where I like I felt something I didn't think I could feel. Kind yeah, of thing, or something like the, that the, or even just people online like even like yourself just listening to it on, and, like yeah so, like, it's, any, it's just... any any of the comments that have been like super positive are so cool to read like yeah any person who's like talked to us after a show and been like man like said anything positive is just like holy shit this is so cool like yeah. anyone res like anyone resonates with this is like super sweet like I yeah know, well we're just sort of, you know like, I, i'll tell some you weird metal and <laughs> What, what it seems like from, you know, like I play a little bit, but I'm, I'm really just a fucking fan of music. And I think when bands play music that they want to play and they want to listen to that band, it's got, uh, it's got a lasting presence and the music is a lot more authentic and genuine when it's played or when you hear it on record, right. Versus something that they're like, Oh, let's just turn this, turn this out and put, put mm -hmm. some singles out or whatever. Right. Um, like I've listened through the whole album, uh, twice, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'm like, oh, I really can get it. I listened to it before I was even like, Hey, I want to, I want to interview those dudes. Mm -hmm. Um, nice. cause I don't want to interview people that I don't like their music. Like, oh well, yeah. What's yeah. the point? <laughs> yeah. Go um, through it. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, but the album's really fucking solid. Um, Thanks, man, I appreciate it. What, what do you guys like? When does it come out? Uh, October 11th. Yeah. yeah, pretty sure it's the 11th. Yeah. Okay. So we got just under two months away, which is it, creeping up. You, yeah. For you guys, it's got to be like getting exciting. You're like, oh, fuck, I can't wait. You know, it's it's cool. Like it's it's already so cool seeing like the response of people that are like, like the transcending announcement came out and just like, you know, new band signing announcement and just like all the comments have been like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Like wasn't expecting something like this here, but it's really good. Like it's been really, really cool. Hell, even yeah. just like reaching out to them in the first place sending them an email like hey would you be interested in working with us like we're just like yeah like sure sure like might as well send them an email but like of course sure yeah. enough they get back to us and we're like holy fuck guys like holy but, fuck this is wait, fucking for real then, <laughs> yeah it worked yeah and it's and it is just a lot of waiting too just in terms of like the process of writing the songs probably took a couple of years or so and then there's like the recording <laughs> yeah. and we are fortunate enough that our guitarist, Nate, he does all of our mixing and mastering in-house. He has a studio in his house and he, he operates has the, the know-how and capability to do that stuff. So that saves us a ton of overhead in terms of the cost of that. 
But I guess the downside of that is he's pretty finicky with how he wants it. And we may not necessarily have the ears to hear that. So then he'll like, he'll send us his, hey, I reamped the guitars. What do you think yeah, of this new sound? And I'm like, it sounds exactly. Eight, the... nine, and ten. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it sounds I exactly the fucking same. Like, I, yeah, but so, you know, he spends a good six months to a year or however long just like, Whittling the knobs to make sure everything's exactly where well, he wants it to be. And not the only that, but his, in, out, his yeah. and my writing process is sort of long and drawn out. Like, we'll, like, we'll, I mean, like, we'll get usually to a point where we'll have a song done and then we sort of just bank it for like a year and then, like, not even think about it and then go back to it. And then, like, is it still good? Do we need to change anything? And then, like, go and tweak there. So, like, even just yeah. having, like, the opportunity to demo something in like a really high quality, like effectively professional, just like plug and play scenario yeah, and get something that's like listenable and genuinely good. You can like come back to it six, eight months later and be like, mm, maybe this part needs a change, but like yeah. up to like up to three minutes, we're like, we're cooking here. So yeah. we do like, we do sort of take a while of like, I mean, Nate will not even bring, riffs to me until he's like i'm certain i've got something here and then he and i will sort of jam it out um like guitar and drums um i've been playing the guitar more so we'll like we'll sit down and be like here's you know the melody let's try to figure out like some cleaner parts like what can we do with it um but yeah he and i will like sort of just like we'll get like a good riff or two that mel that like go together really well and then we just sort of like hammer away on them. So we just like it, it takes a long time just in the process of it. But yeah, having the benefit of operating the studio is just like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a Hell blessing yeah. and a curse in a lot of ways because, you know, you're pretty nitpicky and it doesn't always come out great. Right. Sometimes we'll even get to the point where we've played a song live once or twice. And then we're kind of like, ah, I don't or, really like yeah, how this part like, feels. Let's trim it down or for, switch it out or something. We're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I think I think one of the downsides to to mixing and mastering yourself in your own studio is you don't have an outside perspective on it either. Yeah, right. We, so yeah, it it's it's almost like into a hole. yeah, you know, yeah. It, it it's like walking into a house where someone has twenty dogs, they don't smell it, but you're like, holy shit, dude, you got <laughs> dogs, you know? For sure, um, yeah. Um. And that outside perspective can really tweak it just fucking right. I keep doing yeah. this and I'm like, tune in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and it's, uh, it's true. I mean, we did, um, when we had the songs that we like, we had the album finished, it was just sort of like getting down to like, you know, like track order and things like that. Like, so we were sending like our close friends, like the two, so, like, we were sort of fighting like internally of like i think it should start with this song and then this song and then this song so we're just, just like okay let's just get some outside of the band opinions like listen to these three tracks tell me what order you would put them in if this was yours get back to me in a couple of days you know like i just want to hear your opinion so we asked a couple of people whose opinion that we like trust we like their bands we're like i would if if it was your album i would like be <laughs> it would be really cool to have your input what do you think so we did get we did do that. We got some input back. Um, so, yeah, having some like other people's perspective be like, you know, your opinion is actually wrong on something. It's just like shit, like all three people that we asked don't agree with me. And fuck, I guess I'll sit <laughs> on my hands on this one. Uh, you know, it's it, it's good that you fucking can put the ego aside, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, to, to actually listen to that, though, because it's like, um Oh, Ego. how much of an asshole to ask and then not not use the info right. like yeah yeah oh great yeah we'll just do the same yeah, way yeah, we're doing yeah, it anyways thanks <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> that's so freaking funny so um shows where like where have you guys played and where do you want to play Ooh. so we just uh, wrapped up yeah. a uh a little bit of a a run I've since I do a little bit of like booking and promoting locally and Nate has also kind of taken on that in Windsor as well. Um, so I've started to make a handful of connections in kind of the surrounding area. So that's enabled us to put a few little runs together and whatnot. Um, we've played so many shows with Nepenthe 
from Guelph. They're our buddies at this point that we've lost it's count. They're just they're kind of like a, a black and doom kind of like old woods of e prey styled stuff. So they fit really well with us on a bill. And yeah, we just we we know them well. We we click well together. Um, so we did a three day run with them back in November. That was just uh, Ottawa, Toronto, Guelph. Um, and we just wrapped up about a month ago, a run of eight shows, mostly through Ontario. Um, I think it was, um, let me try and remember, Niagara, Toronto, Windsor, Brantford for the first leg. We kind of did a Thursday through Sunday and then another Thursday through Sunday weekend after that, where we did London, the hometown show. And then we went up to Ottawa, Montreal and Trois Rivière for kind of the weekend. So um one of our i think our second time ever venturing into quebec so that was yeah kind of get a foothold there see a different part of that scene in that definitely um, like southern ontario regional we've been hitting very consistently um yeah it'd be nice to get really like anywhere um yeah. <laughs> again to, to, of course everyone wants to play all the big festivals in europe um oh, that's yeah. the, big old, oh, yeah. uh... <laughs> the, the sheer cost of it just yeah makes it not fun. or even going to the states like it's really frustrating because windsor is literally like right across minutes, the fucking bridge minutes dude. drive from detroit yeah, yeah. but the, you gotta kind of there's the whole visa situation it's super expensive to like do it properly and like mm -hmm. you could do it the wink wink nudge nudge way we've got a couple of like friends who've done it super sneaky and kind of under the radar but like and we it's go a, back and a, forth really on that because like get a 10 year extradition because you yeah, want to play we don't want to be like... banned from ever playing there and totally kneecap and then if you do manage to sneak across you can't promote your shows beforehand because they scrub your social media and that when they're vetting you to come across the border so it's like how good is it really going to go if you can't get the word out and nobody knows about it so it'd be i'd love to play in the states but it does take time and effort to do it properly i think what probably makes more sense for us at this stage is to kind of venture into some other parts of canada so uh yeah. i've got i've got a few good links uh in those the, are long ass those, drives yeah, though yeah. dude like can't the thing with yeah. canada is everything is so fucking far apart yeah, but that's, and that's ideally, the other thing yeah too. ideally you like you t you hop a cheap flight out to a destination and then like rental car and you, you you hope and pray that everything goes great but yeah like so the, the the guys that show up from the west coast all the way to windsor it's like you fucking drove here like, like three days like to get yeah. here dude, like, like yeah. a 10 day fucking trek like Christ. <laughs> so yeah. what it what is the visa processing costs look like for you guys just to come across the river. uh uh i think it's like gotta be like a union member of like the like uh musicians like union? conservatory yeah. yeah musicians union um and so that's like whatever it is a year a thousand two thousand dollars for union dues on top of whatever the visa fees which would i from my understanding are less but it's just like the yearly like union dues keeping that up to date um yeah. If you, I mean, if you're constantly touring, um, it, it simply like you can't not do it. But like yeah. we all do have like regular home, like full time jobs, and like this is where like basically an internet band that sometimes gets to get together and play shows when we can. <laughs> we're, we're at least um, close enough that we can meet up in that. But <laughs> it's just the sheer expense of it makes it so that you'd have to be touring for like multiple months out of the year to to an extent to make it worthwhile or at the very least like yeah. try just and good shows like you don't yeah. necessarily have to mm -hmm. tour for months on end you just have to hit the right shows and i feel like oh, yeah. yeah you know with the sound that you guys have and you know maybe the, a couple of connections here and there i think you guys could hit some really good fucking shows like especially with detroit being right there oh i know yeah jeez dude like they always have some good fucking shows. That's well, where I I grew up in Detroit. Oh yeah, no, uh, it it feels like we've been um in the past two years or so we've really been putting our foot in the door in Toronto. So like some of the like larger events that like we fit or are like kind of fit adjacent to, um like we don't feel like such a weird pick for a promoter to be like oh like hell they're like local enough um like we did the tomorum show am i yeah. frozen no 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 no. yeah yeah, oh. yeah. just, yeah, just listening the... rapidly yeah <laughs> um uh like the uh uh what the hell am i thinking the He's last like... toronto show a hard luck went 
fairly well. Like the like the yep. friends that we've got in there are like pretty solid. Like we so know enough bands like... that are good and fit well and can pull yeah. out a crowd locally, like and like we can do Southern pretty well in, in our kind of local region. Enough. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, what bands is like? What band for you would be like? Oh, we we really want to play with this person that, or this band, and and playing with them would be like, we know we're where we want to be. Well, I would have shit my pants if we got that Almond Raw bill in Toronto, but um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's uh there's a big promoter in um the Toronto area, Inertia Entertainment, and pretty much any of the like big bill metal bands that tour that you would probably be aware of he most likely has a hand in in setting those up um so i mean i don't know how on his radar we are or how you kind of do that right i don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to like harass him and repeatedly hey, ask him to get on his shows because you know i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to be too aggressive and scare him off but at the same time you know there have been a couple of times where a bill that you know i think it was uh celeste came through um, oh, man. Toronto and <laughs> I just shot a cold email I was like hey if you're looking for an opener for this band I, here's a link to our we, stuff we do I think we fit free. well you know let us let us know <laughs> if you're interested never got back to me but I figure you know shoot or shoot doesn't doesn't hurt to shoot the shot um, yeah. and maybe that'll pan into something but the way I like kind of see it is a lot of people want to see that you can do it yourself before they'll add that to you so the more you can kind of set up like a handful of DIY runs and there are a good chunk of like really good bands in like Ontario and Quebec and, and surrounding area that That's like true. I think are just great. We fit well with even just the opportunity to like play with them and see their show for free um is like pretty awesome. So some you kind of building those connections is I think a good way to kind of work your way up the steps. Um, yeah. And then now, even with the transcending obscurity connection, they've yeah, got a whole so whack of bands. Actually, some of those emails, but include the transcending YouTube. Yeah, link, right? yeah, we can kind of do that, and <laughs> that's actually now? part of how I linked up with uh, Ignominy from uh, Montreal. Right, yeah. We did the front half of our um, our Ontario Quebec run last. I basically just read. I knew uh, kind of a mutual who had a connection with them. And I reached out and was like, Hey, love your guys stuff. We'd love to set some stuff up for you down here. Um, you know, let us know if you're available. And it kind of just worked out at the right time. And we're, uh, they were really kind of grateful to get them back in the game. And we play those shows together. And yeah, those guys are our, our good buddies. Now, so, now. so yeah. I, you know, I, I think part of it with a promoter is not just the cold emails, but figure out who the, who the decision makers are and go to those shows and seek out those people. Yeah. That's, that's important too, for and, sure. You know, like, Hey dude, I know you do this. Here's, here's my band. This is what we do. And yeah. then, you know, and, and just fucking constantly also, hustle hey, that here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In person contact is, is valuable. Like, and I think it's definitely understated in today's age of just, the Digital internet age. right yeah. like there's only so interested far that you in can going go like that. interested I, in going yeah 400 people interested in going 18 people going yeah the fuck <laughs> going on <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a lot of that for sure and you yeah. know you're and you're not gonna build connect even like not even just with promoters but with other bands too um like you a lot of the times the best way to get more shows and make connections with other bands is just to go to shows, go to shows. like not even playing them or something but just kind of going to like, either support the scene man. Going that's going to hang out at yeah. the show that's where a lot of people i think really miss the mark is like it's a scene for a reason your band isn't the the sun you know the world doesn't revolve around it go out and support yeah. everyone else and they'll come and support you and it like overall so we see that a lot here and it's across it's across genres right we've got punk and metal kids all going to fucking shows together and it's it's great to see the punk bands support the metal bands and the metal bands support the punk bands and you know just really like come together. I mean, we we had oh god, I went to a show a couple months ago and it was it was local bands fucking sold out, dude. It sold out in thirty minutes. You couldn't. You, yeah. We're standing in there like this, like fuck. I can't go anywhere. 
But yeah, it's but... always cool, like when you get a local that's like uh or a local show rather that's like three or four just locals, there's no road band, and it's just like three or four good local acts that like everyone's excited to see, everybody's buddies, like everybody's just there to have a good time. And it's like it's always those shows that are like at capacity, like the bar has a great night, like every band has just like a shitload of merch sold, like it's always like the weird, like really, really solid locals. Yeah, um, yeah, and those it, shows can do as good or not better than than. And I find even with the younger generation too, because now we're we're all like late twenties, early mid thirties, um, ourselves. And the bands that are like their early twenties and even like late teens in some case that are kind of forming, and some of them are really solid, and they can just pull a crowd of people that we just don't have access to because we're don't a decade older access, than them. Or, yeah, don't and know not only that, but that's the generation, like though that demographic of people has disposable time and money. Like they have the ability more to go to shows and buy merch. <laughs> whereas yeah. a lot they're, of our they're... old buddies that we used to harass to come out or I don't know, maybe they've got, you know, kids or demanding jobs or just life gets in the way, right? So they just can't end up making it out as much as they can. So it's a uh... start at 8 30. I'm gonna have to skip, fella. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me, I like I'm pushing 50 and I've I have that. I'm like, what time do bands start? Six? Fuck, I'm there. Like this is good. Oh, yeah. Can... yeah, early shows are so, honestly. Sunday waiting. show, like, it yeah. starts at 6 30. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shit, not here. Sunday show starts at four. Let's fucking do Ooh. it. Yeah. Yeah. We all got to work in the morning. We all understand. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I could still have a nine o'clock bedtime and I'm like, had a good time. <laughs> oh, we said we're moving this back an hour. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, when the show, when the show start, like even just from our perspective, yeah. When it's like, even if it's a Saturday night and like it's a four band bill, first bands on at like nine 30, I'm kind of like, Oof, yeah, I'm going to be feeling this one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even drink and I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. know, dude. I don't want to stay oh, up man. late. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. I you know, I do though. I, I go to a lot, I try to go to a lot of shows. Um yeah. what you know, and since you guys have been playing together, what's like the the best show that you guys have played where you were like, Man, this was just fucking off the chain. Mm. Uh um I, I mean, the Montreal, show, the Montreal show that we just finished off at Piranha Bar, like, that was probably, like, the best performance, I think. But, like, what were you going to say? Oh, like, yeah, I mean, like, there's, I guess there's different factors, like, in terms of the number of people we've played for. Like, we've played, you know, a good shows where there's been a good couple hundred of people there. And, you know, that's that's a really good feeling. Um, just yeah. personally for me, my favorite show was um, the uh, the arcade show with uh, Toronto. Oh, yeah. That was uh, back sick. in November. Um, and that was for a few reasons. So one, that is like a DIY house venue. Um, really cool. It's like a kind of a queer trans community space. Um, so just there's maybe a group of people that kind of go to those shows that maybe they don't feel super safe and comfortable at your Elsewhere. standard metal show per se, but it's kind of got a built in crowd. So it was like a tiny little spot. And I was like, is anyone going to come here? And then like, by the time band started playing, it was just full. The like there was just, there was just people there, right? Just shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. It was. Wacky. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a very, very unique vibe. I think like a lot of like, I think we played a solid set and the people really resonated with that, but what kind of made it the best show for me was that was my first experience with uh, They Grieve, who are like an oh, Ottawa yeah. kind of post-metal drone band. And they legitimately put on the best live show I've ever seen. Like I was like bawling my eyes out by the end. Yeah, of it. I like when I, was when I, was... I, I had never experienced anything like that before. Like, like and it was when and... I to smoke. I come back in and he's just like red faced, like like he looked like he got kicked in the nose, but he was just like, <laughs> man, oh my god. Yeah, shit, yeah. I, so I, like I can't even describe it. I've never done that at a show before. Like I've had like, and I've seen like my all time favorite bands in like intimate settings. Like I've seen some incredible show, and that just like took the cake with all of it. Like just everything about their performance was just amazing like and then it was just kind of a combination of that and being in this really cool space and then also kind of it hit me that I was like oh my god like that was the best show I've ever seen and I just played a show with them like they're during their set they were like oh shout out to hell as other people you guys did great like it was like oh my they they, they said I did great like it was just <laughs> being able to kind of like 
share that with them and even just like they're you know really 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 cool and just like well-spoken guys and just being able to like talk with them after i mean i was a bit of a blubbering mess at that point but i think they like they appreciated how much the music resonated with them so um, just, with yeah them seeing so them and making that, that connection was yeah like i like because of the space of it i that wasn't the most people we played with it probably wasn't even the most money we've made at a show by any stretch of the imagination but just the vibe of that show and everything was just kind of perfect and i sure. i would definitely recommend if you have a chance to play that space the arcade diy in toronto um do it like it's it's a great little spot great people there um and then we actually got the chance to play with they grieve again just uh last month in ottawa because i was rabidly wanted to get them when i knew we were playing their hometown so i was like <laughs> pretty pretty pleased and Please. <laughs> they agreed to do it and i didn't cry I've, the second i've all time, cried but... so much this time i swear <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah literally i was like i hold it i held it together for this one yeah but but still just oh man they're so good like if yeah they kick ass if there's one like band from ontario i would recommend you listen to after this that that is who i'm recommending I've, there's a I've, lot of, but yeah listen i am solely impressed with your description so i have to go listen to them now like i'm like oh to have a band that resonates that much with anyone is fucking impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You no, know? they're like, yeah, it's like, uh, oh yeah. It's like, I don't know. I guess ISIS would be like the biggest yeah, like, band yeah. comparison. You know, you know, okay. They're just so, ISIS, yeah. yeah. They're just fucking solid as shit. Like heavy, heavy. And then like the synth layers is just like super solid. Yeah. Yeah. The drum has like a little like, kind of noise machine and you would like harmonize the feedback with like the ringing out of the guitar and it just oh man it just yeah that yeah I'm, I'm gonna just go on forever about this band if you let Dude. me so i'm gonna cut yeah. myself off right there that, yeah. that's that's <laughs> fucking that that's really cool so there's a band that resonated with me similar to that um called spotlights they're like okay. originally out of new york i think they're based out of pittsburgh now or something like that cool. but they are they're fucking fantastic. Um, kind of in that same like ISIS type vein, some droning. Um, best, I guess, best way to describe it in my mind is like doom gaze. Hell yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I like the big heavy wall of sound, just like. Yes. Yep. Fuck yeah. And, okay. Yeah. They're, they're so fucking good. And dude, Chris, their drummer just fucking beats on those yeah. drums and yeah. i'm like holy fuck like those things are gonna be dead in like two minutes <laughs> yeah yeah i know yeah they they have the similar it's it's rare that um like a drummer with dynamics like someone who knows when to hit hard and yeah. when to be quiet right because you can get a lot of just range of motion out of knowing how to do that yeah how fucking god how cool is that okay cool they grieve right Yep. Yes. Yep. Trying to like lock that shit in this yeah, yeah. terrible head of mine. I'm like looking down. Am I wearing my great my shirt? But no, I'm not. I'm wearing. What am I wearing? Lovers' teeth. Another cool band that we played with during that yeah, run. They're neat. They're neat. Yeah. I'm wearing Supreme Mystic, which is a Detroit-based band. Hell yeah! Cool. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, they they were actually. So I live in Kentucky now, and they were just here Saturday night with oh, um, Last Call in Jonestown, which was like. Those two bands fucking jammed. The opener was Goose Hydra, which is a local band, um, which fucking jammed. They were like, they had some super punky shit that I was just like, oh my God, like, I love you. This is so great. Um, Goose and the, Hydra? Yeah, Goose Hydra. Um, That's a cool name. <laughs> yeah, they're, dude, they got, I wish I had a sticker with me. I'd fucking show you. They had some yeah. really cool stickers too. Um, okay, back to you guys because we could talk about other bands all fucking night long. <laughs> I like I literally love talking music. That's why I do this shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like what what other bands are you guys listening to that you think more people should listen to? Like they grieve in my mind is fucking number one right now. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah, you want to field this? Uh... Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if you can see. I have a pretty yeah cool CD collection behind me. So yeah, I'm. I'm He's the guy. I was I was a music nerd before I was a musician. So that's been a the constant thing for me. So 
I mean, I'll reel off a few local bands right now because, again, I think it's really important to support like 100% the local scene, the scene and then yeah. like what they're doing. Um, uh, Morse Verum would be one Fuck that yeah, I Morse. would note, right? They're kind of, they're actually, they're also on Transcending Obscurity. I think they just finished recording their album. Uh, we've played with them a couple times over the years. Uh, really good guys, incredible musicians, more like dissonant death metal with a couple of like kind of technical elements, but still a lot of atmosphere going on in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Really, really good stuff. I would definitely, definitely recommend them. Um, Drof Nosera is another one that we just played with that was pretty neat. Uh, they were from Toronto, kind of like an, an almost like a doom gaze, but maybe a little bit heavier than that. Okay. Um, and just, yeah, really, really had something different going on there. Um, oh gosh, now I'm on the spot. Now, now you're like, on the spot have, and you're like, I can't think. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, all these in my head. Um, I would say uh, Nailbiter was pretty cool, actually. Nailbiter yeah. was like a local Windsor kind of shoegazy, heavy rock kind of stuff. That okay, um, yeah, Windsor Windsor's got a really cool, like mostly like hardcore scene, but like there's a lot of like offshoot bands. That's sort of how like we like where we got our foot in was like as a hardcore band and drew out. Um, but like uh, Reliever is cool. Uh, Trench Lung is cool. Uh, 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 um, God, there's so many cool, uh, uh, Windsor bands. Um, uh, who the hell? Yeah. Oh, uh, I like that. Like, I love that like band. Ter who like territory play. Territory. Like... Uh, uh, who the hell is the best though? Th the best? Who the hell is the best? Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Sorry, I was making a, a joke that obviously didn't fucking. He was like, "Oh, oh the who hell? the hell?" And oh, I was like, oh, "Yeah, who yeah, the yeah, hell? Yeah, the yeah, best, yeah. yeah." Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I'll, mm. I'll edit that out because that was a terrible fucking dad joke. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, it's more more. For yeah, us but, uh, now, but, yeah. London's got some good locals too, like. Uh, uh uh Fladeus, uh like who uh oh yeti on horseback we just yeti. We played with them like really good just like crushing brutal kind of doom metal stuff um they also the one the vocalist from there also has a project called escapium which is kind of like all the light parts of opeth if like okay it was if opeth was just an acoustic band it's like just those parts really kind of neat kind of flittery stuff um, there's, there's a couple of really cool, like kind of thrash bands. Like there's like flame spitter, iron cross, uh, a couple just like heavy stuff. Um, ethereal tomb has really been popping off like lately in this area. Again, one of those younger bands that just like everywhere I've seen them, they just pull a huge crowd, like across Ontario and they're like working their butts off touring okay. really like kind of groovy doom metal with like a earth crisis kind of early converge kind of vibe to it okay um, and yeah yeah they're really good stuff and then i guess just outside of that just using like a reference what do we got here um wasn't it a who, tribe who called quest with? uh fucking <laughs> spectral <laughs> voice uh guy really rea cool. guy i got a recent guy rea album they're a huge area i don't know how you pronounce it um but yeah they're good huge influence for us um Buried Inside was a really big one. They were like an Ottawa kind of like uh, kind of atmospheric post hardcore band that they're not a thing anymore, but a uh, really big influence for hell, especially in the early days. Uh, I got some more and I got a couple of neurosis albums here. Okay. Yeah. I'll just, I, I like that you have all this heavy shit and you're like, and a tribe called quest and <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Get here? <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah. I gotta, well, especially for my more tech band. Cause I do a lot more like fast choppy vocals. Mm -hmm. So I take a lot more influence from hip hop for the lyricism of that. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of, I've been re listening to a lot of uh, cannibal ox lately, actually the cold vein uh, album. That's a okay. really, really cool. Just like, just artistic hip hop album, I would put it. But I definitely don't know nearly as much about hip hop as I do about metal, so I'm sure. probably railing yeah. off some pretty good ones. But I'm in, I'm in the same vein though. Like I know a lot more about like metal and and that shit than I do hip hop. But I'm like I was surprised with the Tribe Called Quest because I've got a couple of Tribe Called Quest albums over there, <laughs> and I don't do CDs, so everything of mine is in vinyl. Okay, yeah, I'm the opposite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
No, I like I have a few vinyl, but I'm 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 CD guy through and through. Uh, uh, just the price point and for me is just yeah, uh, yeah, too too good to uh, yeah, like my, my pick record up player, like several albums for thirty bucks versus my record player died album. and I never replaced it. So I've got a couple of vi- records that have been sitting around for years now, just yeah. collecting dust. I appreciate the appeal for sure. Like the bigger artwork, the audio quality, like even it's just cool the ritual hold, of yeah. like putting the needle yeah. on the turntable and just vibing out, right? It's it's a more like engaging listening. It is experience, an experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like with a CD, you throw it in a car, you're not doing that shit with a record. You no. know, <laughs> you'd be like, oh shit, that record scratched. Now I got to go buy a new one. Yeah. Every yeah. time you hit a yeah. bump. But I, that's, well, you know, you. Oh. of course, being a little bit older than you guys, that's what I grew up with was vinyl. So I, like when I met my wife, I was like, hey, listen, all my vinyl burned up in my my house a couple of years ago. I don't like don't buy me any vinyl because it mm. will not be fucking good. Mm. And she's like, okay. Not six months later, she fucking buys me a record, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> now I need, <laughs> yeah, now I need a fucking <laughs> record player. And now like that was ten years ago, probably, and I don't know. Yeah. I'm, and we I'm need probably... a shelf and some crates, and <laughs> yeah, well, we've got. <laughs> I've got a cube system. So there's, I don't know, maybe like 14, 16 cubes. Holy so, God. <laughs> yeah. And I've got records that won't fit in all the cubes. So there's probably another two cubes off to the side. Um, and I think they hold 50 to 60 per like cube. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Quick math, it's a lot, dude. It's expensive, <laughs> is what that is. Yeah. My kids go, "Why do you collect records?" I'm like, "Well, one, because I love it, and two, because when I die, you guys can either enjoy them or sell them off." And they're like, "But they're not mm. worth that much money." And I, I <laughs> pulled, I pulled it out. The right sh- person. I pulled them up and showed them like what the estimated value was, and they're like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> Yeah, no, you go into some of those, like, uh, yeah, you could, like, for Nate, yeah, you go into, like, the CD store, and it's, like, you, like an expensive CD is, like, $30, and that's, like, the starting point on a record. On a record, so, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've definitely been in some, like, some CD stores with you when you're doing your big shops, been like, oh, 25 bucks, I'm not sure if I want to splurge on this, and, like, we go into <laughs> yeah, a record yeah. store, and it's like, oh. 25 bucks, like, score, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I got a fucking deal on that. Like yeah. I, yeah, only only forty five dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but I guess it does make you selective too of what you buy, right? Like you you're gonna make sure that whatever you do buy on a vinyl is good. Whereas I've you know if it's like five bucks, I'll blind buy some stuff. Sometimes it's sure. good, sometimes it's crap, and you know that's it's the thrill of the chase, I guess. But then <laughs> you know, just end up with a stack of stuff I need to kind of get rid of because i'm probably not going to listen to it kind of well i i do that with records like i'll just buy a bunch (laughs) of shit like that's a cool fucking cover and i get it and i'm like that fucking sucks oh (laughs) yeah that was oh that was yuck yeah and then i'm like what do i do with it well i'm just i think this person will like it like i don't really care for it so i fucking (laughs) pass it them and like oh fucking cool free record that cover on that album there there you go yeah keep keep the cycle going of people who who appreciate it yeah someone will fucking appreciate it for sure (laughs) um so who did the artwork for your upcoming album that would be uh, Adam Burke. Uh, he's pretty night jar illustration. He's pretty known for um, he's actually done a lot of artwork for transcending obscurity bands. Uh, Vorga is one that I know he's done off the top of my head. Uh, he's done a lot of others. Like I know Chornabog, he did their album cover. Um, there's just like a surprising amount. Like if you see one that has kind of like his oil painting sort of style. Yeah. It's almost certainly him. Like he's a pretty. I mean, we, we kind of just were looking at his pieces and being like well i like this one and this one and you like this one and this one so like let's like try to like take a vote and see what we like and we ended up did we we did end up buying that one well before we talked to transcending we were sort of sat on it for like a year or so maybe a year and a half um where we were like this is what we want to use but like we want to make sure that we release it properly so yeah we basically had everything together by the time we were sending out like, Hey, does anyone want to release this with us? Um, 
shit good so for like, you though for at least having all of that in order before I, I feel like I feel like that went a long way for being like, hey, like, we're going to do this with or without anyone's help. If anyone wants to sign the meal ticket, like, and it's not going to be a big, expensive five star meal. But yeah, hey, like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We're you're going to be doing all that. You got you got to have everything ready and you got to yeah. know what like is going to appeal to me. Because, again, I buy a lot of albums. I know what album cover will suck me in and be like, OK, this is probably pretty good. I can make an educated guess here. Um, yeah. yeah, but it wasn't commissioned or anything. That is one thing I want to do in the future is actually yeah, for get sure. an artist to do like a custom piece based on like our kind of vision and description. Well, we just kind of saw yeah, an already even, finished piece and was like, cool, we'll go with that one. Even with this one, we like we were like, we will buy this like outright 100 percent. Not a problem. We will buy this. Could you possibly tweak it in any way? He's like, not a chance. We're like, fair. We'll <laughs> yeah. buy the piece as is. Like, cool. Yeah, I'll yeah. fucking still <laughs> yeah, take it. Like, yeah, wait, yeah, cool. Like, no problem. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we will. We will write our lyrics to fit your artwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. So it it kind of leads to the next question, right? With, I know you guys might not be thinking about this, but with the next album. Um, do you guys have any plan on maybe recording and going to an artist and saying, Hey, listen to this and give us something that fucking fits it. I mean, certainly that'd be, um, the, I think would be the ideal would be like, have a nearly finished product and be like, so here's like the themes and, you know, like the overarching, I guess, like main idea. Um, well, you know, like, well, where does it take you, you know, let us know or whatever, you know, give us a, give us a rough, in a day or two or something but like uh yeah that, that'd that be really cool um but yeah just dude, like having someone um i mean like i know how difficult it is working with artists to be like, like hey can i make this small change uh i guess yeah <laughs> but even yeah um, having that starting it almost like from the ground up and working <laughs> with like a concept and vision and there's a couple artists i have in mind too i could go to adam burke again like he's definitely great uh, I've always really wanted to get a piece from Brad Moore. Um, I, he did the cover art for uh, Tomb Mold and Sedimentum. And they have this just like really cool, like kind of colorful, abstract, very detailed style that yeah. like, I, I don't know how well that would fit with what we're going for, but I'm sure he's an artist. I'm sure he could make it work in, in some yeah. way. Well, but I, I guess, you know, it's, it's also pretty pricey to go with one of those guys custom or something. So that's well we'll that's see. we'll get a couple quotes we'll see what kind of makes the most sense and go well from. after you guys yeah. sell a million fucking copies of this well, one, and, yeah, one, yeah, yeah there we go yeah once this one certainly once this one does so well kunal will be like sure man you can go to whoever you want i'll foot the bill like yeah well he did oh, uh, i mean like that it is, is a like a perk of it, transcending it is sort is of yeah for like the he, next he, release he, and, like, yeah if he, we're going with them too he'll help with some of those costs is my understanding yeah, sure. for yeah. Well, the... and I think that's like with most labels, right? It depends on like if you come to them and you're like you work well together and you sell two copies, they're gonna be like, uh, hold on. Right? Yeah, we're like whereas we're good friends, but mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas, you know, you come out and I feel like what you guys are doing is exactly what you should be doing. You're, you know, out there hustling on the fucking road to to get people out listening to your music, doing interviews and and shit like that to bring more people in. Right. Which is will most certainly translate to album sales. And when the label sees that, they're like, oh, you did, you know, you did exactly what you're supposed to fucking do. Mm -hmm. You we've yeah. got some sales like yeah, like let's put some more money behind you and see where where we can help get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, yeah, like the the support that uh, like the that we run that like that Kunal's getting us through t uh, To is like it's so cool. Like, um, like the like the I, the the merch that he's producing for us, like the 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 mock up for the vinyl is so cool looking. Like the the three color that he's doing looks so fucking cool. Like. Yeah, um, and I know actually the quality of the merch they do is amazing. Actually, I'm wearing we a, bought a we, yeah, wearing we bought one a right now. Yeah, it's, it's like, like we were like, we're gonna get It's got the full color, like three sided design and everything like that. Oh yeah, they yeah. all fit nicely. They're comfortable. They're like pre shrunk, good cotton. Like hell yeah, quality shirts. So let's go back to the vinyl because you know I'm a fucking <laughs> nerd. Go, yeah. What color? What colors? Uh, 
Uh, so it was like white and black mostly with like a little bit of like the, like the brown, um, from like the, like the, al- like the album art covers, mostly black and white with a little bit of brown speckle. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the splatter style. Like it's got, oh, nice. all got like met and yeah, meshed yeah. in thing. Yeah. No, it, really, look really it, looks, cool. it looks even as like a non vinyl collector. Like I have a handful. I'll probably get one just because that's, that's yeah <laughs> you kind of fucking have to yeah i yeah. kind of want one <laughs> yeah like that's fucking cool i you know of course i'll fucking go order one because i'm mm-hmm. that guy i really like the band so i'm gonna fucking buy the vinyl no, thank you yeah um awesome. that's so the guy that i am is if i like the band i'll i'll listen to you on streaming pretty regularly but i also want the physical copy because I want to feel like I'm actually supporting the band and not just yeah, like that's definitely the best way to do it. Then gotta get something paying, paying Daniel yeah. Eck or whoever. Yeah, whoever yeah. the fuck it is. <laughs> Those guys on, are. Dude. Yeah. We had our best year on Spotify last year. We made like sixty cents. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what was it? Peter Frampton was like fifty-five million streams. I made fifteen hundred bucks. You're like. What it's, the fuck? It's a disturbingly yeah. low percentage, but it, I, I have a subscription and I use it all the time. So I like. <laughs> I, I have steadfastly I uh, refused. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, well, because I, I do a bit of reviewing as well. Um, so I get enough promos in my email that that can just be my source of checking new music out. Um, plus, my collection and everything. I just go back to revisit old stuff and you can access most things on like YouTube and that, but I understand the convenience of Spotify is like, especially if you are a music nerd, like it's, it's pretty tough to say no to that. I've very been very close to caving and getting it, but, uh, pretty convenient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it but really I also under, yeah. It, it doesn't pay art. Like if you're, if you're making music, like don't expect that to be your, primary Your source, bread and butter. source of income like yeah or right. like maybe if you get a little bit from it cool that's a nice bonus but you know yeah and, yeah diversify mm-hmm. get some different revenue streams for sure yeah, yeah we uh yeah i think we all had to take vacation days for this like last string of shows that we did i think we still came back with money in the band but I don't know if it made up for all the all the money that we didn't make at work. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a good way. Of, uh, yeah. Well, that, you know, and that's the hard thing about being uh, being I'll, I'll say just like a newer band, you know, that hasn't been around for 20 years and touring yeah. constantly as mm-hmm. you know, do is is weighing that. But I, again, right, like the the right shows in front of the right people and playing like cost effective sort of like strings of shows like not driving unnecessary lengths of time and playing on wednesdays to small towns like when you know yeah we kind of purposely avoided doing weekdays um on the like the last month or so uh just because like it's not it, it it's not tenable really but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to it's hard to make it worth your while. But yeah, you spread you spread it out enough. Right. You don't want to play two really close cities because then feasibly anybody who would, have, you know, you'll split your crowd kind of thing. Spread it out just enough, but also make it worth your while and gas and that. And yeah, yeah infrequent just... enough, but still frequent enough. But yeah, it's it's a it, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Are you, do you guys have plans to get like a booking agent? Oh, that'd be nice um that's that'd be cool to be on the road road, like yeah 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 if it happens um it's cool like i know of uh like i have friends in bands who do have booking agents and um like to kind of have connections to people who book larger tours and that um from what i can tell it's almost more of a they'll come to you you don't go to them kind of thing because they're probably just inundated with requests from people so constantly that you just lose track and and again they want to see that you can do it yourself so hopefully and just kind of keep grinding away and doing what we can kind of with the resources that we have um you know we are fortunate in the sense that we we have pretty decent enough day jobs so like we can Mm -hmm. afford to take the hit in that sense right of just yeah and we're not relying on playing music to like eat 
and yeah. that which you know that's i maybe that can be a bit more of a motivator in a sense but i feel like you know you, it's kind of yeah. a balance that can kind of detract from it in a sense where you're kind that of was definitely the dream when i was younger but it's it's now it's just like it's a privilege to get to do this and anyone be like wow that was really cool i'm like <laughs> wow yeah thanks old drunk guy at the bar i appreciate that incredible like, yeah 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 now yeah. it it Sorry, you man. know it it definitely does change you know as you get older and, and the priorities change from you know obviously as a, a late teens early 20s you're like fuck we could go live in the van for like I'm 17 years let's and we're do it. good yeah, on the yeah. floor hell yeah let's yeah. go then you're like 30 and you're like ah my back will hurt I in the morning i I'm really not into that floor. shit i fucking wanted to kill everyone all day the next day <laughs> <laughs> i've slept on more floors than i fucking care to count yeah, yeah dude it's it's uh <laughs> it's it's a rough go now yeah it's a fucking especially now i'm like uh my wife's like hey you know i got something going on uh i gotta get up early do you want to sleep on the couch i'm like no i really don't want to sleep on the couch that's gonna <laughs> fucking suck yeah, do you just, want like, to just sleep wait, on I, the I don't care if i get up early i'll be able to fall back asleep <laughs> right. in, in the comfort of my own bed yeah right so do you guys have like um goals with this album when it's released are there like thresholds that you want to be able to cross with it I think whatever we kind of get is like, it, again, because this is our first album with we did do um a, kind of a more that's like a local label that's a little bit more like death, brutal death metal for the last one, CDN Records. We know him well because he's uh, ba the main guys based out of Windsor there. Um, But this is the first time where we've really got a label that's kind of got a kind of a different sort of listener base and a different crowd. So it'll I'm just kind of I just kind of i'm excited yeah. to see how it goes we'll just kind of work as hard as we can to um push the album in as many avenues as we possibly um possibly kind of can and see where that kind of takes us and what opportunities that lends us uh we're a little kneecapped on the live show front for like the immediate future because <laughs> uh, cards on the table um i'm expecting my first child and uh i think a Pretty soon, pretty soon, like That's within a couple soon. of weeks kind of thing. So that oh, was congratulations. why. Congratulations. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So we did, you know, I got my licks in. We did a bunch of shows beforehand yeah, um, yeah, got this, out of this month. And then I'll I'll get my bearings. I'll, I'll adjust to kind of the new lifestyle. And um, so we'll lay low for a few months. But I definitely want to try and put together like an album release tour of sorts. Once it's already out, maybe venture into a different place that we haven't been before. And then. Yeah, once mm. 2025 hits, really just kind of selectively plan out some some little maybe like weekend runs and some shows to support that. Right. I'm and gonna have to get on your fucking email list because I when you guys play Windsor, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make one of those fucking shows. Oh Hell yeah, awesome. man. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh no, there's uh there's a good little good little spots to play. Yeah, we'll probably get yeah, back there. We'll we'll definitely play there again at some point. But you also there's a balance you have to strike between uh like playing enough that people remember who you are and not playing like every month. Right. Because like mm -hmm. eventually people stop coming out if you're playing like literally even like the, every even the really, really, really good bands are like, Oh, there's only like twenty five people here last week. It's like, yeah, yeah, we saw you a month ago, dude. Like yeah. two months, six weeks, like come on man but yeah it's it, uh well and like to get back to like the i guess uh like album release um yeah kind of just see like what we get like with the to the transcending like release because there's so many people that are just like oh cool like transcending band like gonna check it out gonna listen a lot of the people are like this is really cool i'll buy it um so like it'd be just kind of waiting to see like the internet reaction yeah. And then, like, uh, Nate and I are sort of getting back into, like, writing mode again. Um, just, like, because Nathan's expecting very soon, it's just, like, not Perfect really going to be Joe's time. Yeah, we're going to, like, sort yeah. of hunker down, get some, yeah, at least get some skeletons figured out for some songs that we can, I guess, bank on for the next little while while we, like, yeah, hope we kind of did our, like, release shows this past month where it was just like hey like the the download and the we like, have a single the, out yeah <laughs> the pre-release uh link is up if you wanted to pre-release um 
but yeah, it was uh, it was kind of just like get it all out now because we're not gonna have a, a big chance to do it in the coming months. Right. Um. But yeah, also like, I hate, I hate to travel for shows in the winter. Um, like just like there's too there's too much that can just go wrong to to yeah, to yeah. to play for your to play for your friends and 40 people like um that's why a lot of bands go to like florida and texas another and place shit. Yeah. So, so yeah yeah oh that would get away sense. from it yeah but yeah it's like the, the for us the option to do that is like <laughs> not yeah. not not really uh well sure and i would i would say that that being said that for that very same reason i do find local shows tend to do better in the winter months because That's like true. like it's because like you know there's not a lot of bigger sort of touring acts coming through for that reason so you don't have the thing with summer is there's so much competition right there's so many yeah. other shows of comparable nature going on both other locals and bigger acts that well, are coming through and whereas also, in january like how fucking hot was it there's uh, yeah, oh yeah day, like, yeah it was yeah <laughs> <laughs> and there's and there's so many other like there's no other shows going on in like january like your show could be like the show and like you want to be like the show that like yeah. everyone's going so so i find occasional little local one-offs or do really well like i've even just found like booking locally um some of the best shows that i've done um have been in like january february like even shows where i was like geez it's 30 below out is anyone gonna want to come out and then Boom. It's the only thing that's happening. Yeah, that's 80 happening. to 100 what people. Like, in yeah, because right? everyone like, else is yeah. like, it's 30 below. Fuck that. Like, Ooh. we're not Let's doing that shit. And it won't be that bad. Yeah. 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 Well, we so we don't have that problem here because it doesn't get that fucking cold. No. No, we're, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably six or seven hours away from where you guys are. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, in, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. So, oh, okay. Okay. Like, they're like, it's going to snow. I'm like, you don't know what snow is. We get like two inches. The city shuts <laughs> down. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Because I've heard that that in like where they don't get a lot of snow in those more like southern areas because they don't have a lot of like, like we have like snow plows and a whole yeah. set oh, infrastructure yeah, set for like go, clearing like... the roads and making it safe. Um, whereas, yeah, it's it becomes like the pipes freeze in like Texas or something like that if they have like an unusually cold day. But yeah, no one no one really has like I mean, I guess they have furnaces, but I don't know that they know how to use them. You yeah. know, like, yeah, like, yeah, they don't need to use them. In They're like, it's 70 degrees. So I got my fucking coat on. You're like, it's 70 degrees, dude. I still have shorts on. What is going yeah. on here? <laughs> like my. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. So. Oh my Tell us about what are you going to have, boy or girl? Oh, it's a girl. Oh. Yeah, yeah. To live in the girl dad life. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. not fun. I'm sorry. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> honestly, I was a little relieved because it was like, I don't know. I I know what kind of degenerates guys can be. I didn't want to want a little <laughs> hilly and run it around and. I mean, no need to worry about time. it for a good 15, 16 years. Yeah, yeah. And then and then, and then I'll have to worry about other degenerate guys coming. Yeah. Coming down there you go. Time, so. Yeah. Um, I, I, so no, I've got. It, it'll be exciting. And for I sure. hope she wants to learn drums because God damn, we need more drummers. <laughs> That's the, all you do is just start her young. Here, yeah, well, here exactly. Is, yeah, yeah. Isn't nope. this fun? Don't you like this? <laughs> here's Neil Pert. Like here's yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Check these people out. It's cool as fuck, ain't it? Go to that. I I did the so I've got one of each, a boy and a girl, but they're um fuck. <laughs> they're the age of the kids who are in those new bands now. They're like 17 and 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They're oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just hitting that late teens, early, yeah. early stage. Yeah. Yeah, luckily, like we get, we lucked out. We got really good fucking kids. Um, good, that's cool. Yeah, which I don't know how, because I was a fucking degenerate as a teenager. <laughs> oh my god, it was terrible. Um, all right, I'm not gonna keep you guys all night. Um, I appreciate you coming to take take time and chat with me. We got a lot of conversation going. I learned a lot about you guys. I'm fucking excited. Um. I do have to go pre-order the album now. Oh darn! Thank you. Oh, oh um, yeah, yeah. All right. My wife's gonna be like <laughs> another fucking record. 
<laughs> hey, I, check out the check out the color. It's fucking cool it's as hell. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, guys, thank you for for joining me tonight to have a chat. Um, I really am. I'm super excited to to have the album on vinyl. Super excited to see what happens for you guys. Um, have a great fucking night. Yeah. Thanks, dude. You too. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Thanks, yeah, dudes. Thank you, thank you very much, man. Hell yeah. See ya. <laughs>